Hi and welcome to this video, the second in a series featuring Captain plugins. The first was a tutorial and a review of Captain Beat, but in this one I'll be taking a quick look at Captain Chords before assembling a lo-fi style track. When you launch Captain Chords, it asks you to choose a key for the chord sequence. So let's try a key I wouldn't normally play in. Let's have a look, uh, F sharp uh, minor, let's go for that. Having selected the key, which we're free to change later, we're taken to the main screen where we can define our chord sequence. So uh, let's start with the uh, the six chord, no, the five chord. Let's... Right, well, here we can adjust the octave. And we can adjust the complexity of the chord, which is the number of notes in the chord, like so. So that's, uh, we can go, obviously, take it further. And we'll leave it at four notes, like so. You can input your chords in a number of different ways. If we go to the Play tab, you'll see that you can input uh, the chords using a MIDI keyboard. If we uh, select MIDI keyboard, we can choose uh, the various octaves, how we input the chords. So there's common chords in this first octave. We can say, for sake of argument, put seventh chords in the second octave. And in the third, we could, for example, have in-scale notes so you could play a melody over the top. You can also use the computer keyboard. Uh, so defining... Uh, most of the common chords are in this row from A to J. Uh, seventh chords, for example, are in the row above. And if you hold down shift, you can make it nine chords, etc. All the clues are at the left-hand side. But for now, I'm going to uh, stick to the main page and build up our chord progression this way. So by pressing the plus button to the right of the chosen chord, like so, we can choose our second chord. If I select, um, let's say, the three chord, which is an A major, if I... Um, now go to inversion and select, say, the uh, first inversion, the second inversion, and the default triad. You can get your different inversions that way, but it is best when creating a, a progression probably to select a minimize leap, which will be what a normal keyboard player would do is keep as many um, consecutive notes as possible uh, so that progression sounds more natural. So let's uh, let's go and select the next one. Again, it's set to minimize leap. So uh, let's this time go back to the tonic, the one chord. And let's create a fourth one. And we'll go back to the uh, fifth chord. So now we have our four chords. Let's listen back to them. I'll uh, press play. So you can add uh, different flavors as well. So if we select, say, the second chord here, we can go to the flavor drop down and say, make that a seventh. Add various notes to the chord. So you can build up a more complex chord that way. Let's just leave it as it is for now. So now we have our basic chord structure. Let's experiment by changing the sound and looking at some of the other options. To use Captain Chords with any of your plugins, simply select uh, the VST outputs down here, like so. And if I unmute Hallion, you'll see I've got a guitar sound loaded up. But that's not the most uh, realistic guitar we're going to hear, so let's let's try and uh, improve that. So I'll, I'll mute Hallion Sonic again, we'll work within uh, Captain Chords and have a look at uh, some of the other settings. So from within Captain Chords, I'm going to select a guitar type sound. So I'll switch it back to audio and uh, click on where it says piano strings, which is the default sound. Actually, while I'm doing this, some of the, some of the included sounds are rather good. So let's have a listen. So there's, um, there's quite a variety of sounds to get you inspired. There's um, plucks, keys, leads, pads, strings, voice, and guitar. So for now, let's uh, select uh, guitar and let's try 
Pauli, which is like a Les Paul type sound. And uh, let's go back and listen to the uh, pattern again. So this is where we can introduce strum. So let's have a little bit of strum. You have different options as down as if you're strumming in a downwards um, direction, all down, all up. If you're strumming up a guitar or alternate, which is what I'm going to leave it on. I'm going to leave it on alternate and we'll have a listen to that. I'll exaggerate so you can hear it more. Right, so we're, we're getting a little bit better now, but we can also introduce various rhythm patterns which break up the chords into uh, chord patterns. So let's uh, select rhythm and we'll try this one, addiction, and hit uh, OK. Now this gives us a good opportunity to look at how to edit some of the patterns as well. So to uh, select a uh, strum, if you like, I'll click on it and to delete it, I right click and it's gone. And uh, to lengthen another section, click on it and drag to the right. And similarly, if you want to uh, pick it up and move it, you can do so by hovering over it like so and moving the, the uh, strum of the chord. So let's, uh, let's do the same thing. Well, let's have a listen to that uh, now. That's okay, let's do the same thing for the last pattern. So right click to delete and we'll extend like so. And uh, let's try introducing some uh, swing now to the, uh, to the feel. So I'll just dial in the swing dial. So we're already getting sort of closer to a uh, a standard type uh, guitar sound. Let's have a listen again uh, on Halion Sonic. So I'll uh, unmute Halion and I'll switch it to VST output. Right, the other option you have is once you've created um, a chord pattern that you're, that you're happy with, pick it up, drag it into your VST like so, and we can now um, Let's mute Captain Chords and just have a listen back to Halion Sonic. There we go. So um, if I double click the part, we can open it up in the MIDI editor. And here we can see the, the effect of the strum. Look, each note is progressively later there. And also the effect of the swing. You see how the notes aren't on the beat. They've got that uh, swing feel. So uh, where things can get interesting, if I call up uh, Halion Sonic itself, is that you can uh, use some of the built-in either arpeggios in your VST, or you can use, for example, Flex Phraser here within uh, Halion Sonic. And uh, if I mute that, we'll get, uh, I've set it to Flex Phrase to Funky Strat to give us some more, um, well, you'll hear it. So what's happening there is that the chords are triggering the phrases within Halion Sonic. You could be triggering an arpeggio to the, that you have. You could set uh, the chords to trigger an arpeggio, which in turn would feed into your VST. And using that, you can achieve some, some really excellent results. Now, what would be a good idea here is actually just to give Flex Phraser, because it's working on, uh, it's creating all the timing itself is to give it block chords rather than the, uh, the the strummed chords that we set up earlier. But if you do that, you'll it'll achieve a more accurate uh, strumming effect. One thing I forgot to show you was the space control over here. If you adjust that, you'll see it's set to Smart Legato. It's basically like a gate time uh, for all the, all the notes. You can, of course, adjust the length of each note individually or pick it up and move it. But that's a convenient way of doing them all at the same time. Think of it as a bit like a, a gate command on a sequencer. It lets you adjust the gate time. So now let's apply the principles we've just looked at in Captain Chords along with Captain Beat and create a lo-fi style track. So this is the arrangement window for the track. And you can see straight away that it's very sparse, partly due to the nature of the lo-fi style and partly due to Captain Chords lending me a helping hand. Anyway, let's work through the arrangement from top to bottom. Captain Beat is the first track, so let's open that up now. 
and you'll see that I'm using a mixture of uh, standard samples. 411 kick, 411 acoustic snare. They come with the uh, they come with Captain Beat, and some of my own samples. Some lo-fi percussion and a lo-fi sort of knocking snare. I've created my own kit, saved it away, so we're all ready to go. And the beat sounds like this. So let's have a look at the channel settings. To keep uh, everything lo-fi, I've filtered off the uh, top end and also used Quadrifuzz. Quadrifuzz is included free of charge with Cubase Pro uh, and it's a four band using four over four separate frequencies tape tube and distortion plugin uh, so I've got it all set I've got it set all four set to a uh, tape apart from the upper mids which I've set to tube distortion if we listen to it you'll see that uh, it's processing the if I solo each section it's processing each frequency band, the lower two with quite a high amount of drive through the tape setting. And the upper mids I'm processing through a, a tube setting. And put it all together. And I've switched the drive off, but I've still left it on tape for the highs. So everything's going through the quadrifuzz. Then the EQ is being rolled off. Using a send, I'm sending to Valhalla, which is set to a room setting. So I'll show you that now. So on the vintage verb, I have it set to a large wood room uh, to give the drums a sense of their own space. Right, so let's move down and have a look at the Captain Chords settings. And take that off solo and have a look at Captain Chords. And you'll see that I've set up a chord progression. I've used the split command at the end here so we'll go from a sort of a minor seventh chord. The final chord here, by using that split command, I've split it into two and created just a bit of variation at the end. Now I've got this set to VST outputs and I'll show you how, uh, how that's rooted. So if you look at the Contact and Omnisphere tracks, you'll see that they're both set to receive from Captain Chords MIDI out. So that's why there's nothing in the arrangement here. They're both taking their inputs from Captain Chords. If I open up Contact, you'll see that I've used the English Felt Piano, which is uh, from the Piano Book website. The Piano Book's a collective sample project offering free samples for musicians created by musicians. Well worth checking out. You do, of course, need a, a copy of Contact to run most of the samples that are included on there, but uh, there are some that work on EXS24 and you might be able to convert them to other formats. I chose this piano because of its dampened sound. So let's have a look at the uh, channel settings. And if I open it up, you'll see that I've sent it to a generous um, a portion of it. No, no EQ settings because the, the uh, piano is uh, quite a damped sound. If I open up uh, this second uh, Valhalla, I've set it to a much more generous decay setting, 6.73 seconds. So let's listen to the piano with that long reverb in conjunction with Captain Beat and hear what the two sound like together. So layered with the piano is Omnisphere. This is using a patch from Plugin Guru's Mega Magic Violin Patch Bank. The patch is the glorious Rivendale patch. Uh, but I've had to edit it as I only wanted this to gently support the piano chords. There are three elements to the patch. Basically the uh, violins and a choir. Now you'll see that I've uh, taken the level way down for the choir. You can only just hear it coming in to support the piano. And if I now switch on the um, violins, Again, I have them very low in the mix. So the third element is a babbling brook sample. In the original patch, this is mixed low for added atmosphere, but here I added it much higher, which is this one, switch it on. 
so it's it's much higher and i use this to um to add a little ambience to the overall effect lo-fi style tracks often have vinyl scratches and crackle uh, but in my case i'm going to use the sound of water as a substitute so again let's put them all together So that's the all four layers now that go to make up the main sound. For the lead sounds, I experimented with Captain Play. Captain Play knows that Captain Chords is set to A minor, so it sets itself up to work in that key. Here I've set up Pad Shop to take its input from Captain Play, and you're free to improvise away by playing your VSTs through Captain Play. If a note is played out of key, then Captain Play will correct that note. So if, for example, I hit a G sharp, it will correct it to a G, and if I hit an F sharp, it will correct it to an F. You'll see the incorrect note is highlighted in red, and the correct note is highlighted in blue. And if I play an F, it just displays the F. You can, of course, use the keyboard as well, but be careful if you do so, or you may end up triggering keyboard commands on your door by mistake. So let's have a look at Pad Shop. I'll close this up and open up Pad Shop. You'll see that it's set to the preset harp guitar keys, but what I've done is I've actually uh, taken off the internal reverb because I'm sending it to the larger uh, Valhalla reverb that I showed you earlier, the longer Valhalla reverb. The final sound is a stock contact piano that uh, I used as it had a longer sustain than the felt piano. But as it was brighter, I rolled off the top end again and sent, also sent it out to the same longer Valhalla vintage reverb. If I show you the mixer settings, you'll see that on the master output, I used Yuhi's tape emulation, Satin. Not so much for a wonky old tape setting, but to subtly help bind everything together. So before I share the end result, if you've enjoyed the video, please remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon if you want to be notified of new releases. So thank you for watching and here's the end result of this lo-fi experiment.